We are making the virtual HBCU experience available wherever you live through Stillman Online. We offer online degrees in business, criminal justice, psychology, and religion. Stillman also offers technology badges in cybersecurity and data analytics. You can participate in all student activities, fraternities and sororities, internships, graduation ceremonies, and much more. Apply for admission today at stillman.edu. Stillman College, where we prepare you for a different world. T. Madden & Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden & Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden & Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Q Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard, or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q Time, an Urban Passport member. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvée. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. Oh, we've got Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Authentic Caribbean cuisine. Yeah. I love my HBCU. Uh. And boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. 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 
I tune into the ACCU Sports Lab to see if my team want to loud. If they loud, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a loud, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention. This is Dr. Cavill with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Welcome to episode 323 inside the HBC Sports Lab Radio Show and Podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBC sports. For institutions large and small, from the NAIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on it. the HBCU sports culture, HBC athletic aesthetics, to facilitate the story of HBC athletic programs and the business of HBC sports. We just call it HBC sports pedagogues. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Bill, with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Filming from my home studios and sending a signal like Case Waste 1230 AM Studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. With that being said, let me go ahead and go to Mike Washington. How are you doing today, Mike? No, I'm good, Doc. What's going on, man? Man, you talking about some big games happening this weekend, man. We got we got homecomings plural. We got uh <laughs> class classics happening. Everybody wanna go to their homecoming. Everybody think their homecoming is the best. So we're gonna see what what we gonna see what it do and let it do what it do. <laughs> let it do what it do. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab. It's sponsored by THG Agency. THG Agency is the company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. With that, let me go to Charles Bishop, who's in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, I, I heard something big kind of happening down that way. Something big is kind of happening down this way. I tell you what, you can put uh, four homecomers and a classic together, and that's what you have here in Jackson. <laughs> <weekend. laughs> Man, you four homecomers. And a class. Hey, it, it is bananas. It is bananas yeah. this weekend. Now, not everybody can be on Good Morning America. <laughs> and all in the video with, with Michael Strahan. All in the video with the dancing girls. <laughs> I, then I they turn he, around to get college game day to come down there. Yeah, everybody can't get some. Hey, man. <laughs> it's like, it's I'm already like bananas. Mike, though, and all these other, all these other folks out here talking about something little, 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 little something going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. let me jump out with this one. I like this. This is kind of um, one of those continued things. You know, you had the announcement uh, a couple of weeks ago with Jackson State and a couple of players getting their NIL on with black businesses. We heard that very early on, actually. Got another example, but this one is in terms of athletic teams. Florida A&M teams will be sponsored by Black Girl Sunscreen. Black Girl Sunscreen is jumping into the world of college athletics for FAMU. This is out of coming out of Los Angeles, California. Black Girl Sunscreen, BCS continues, BGS, I should say, continues to push boundaries and celebrate women. And they're beautiful as a Black-owned brand has embarked on a landscape partnership with Florida A&M University, FAMU. The move makes BGS the first official sponsor of university's women track and field team and their women's softball team. I just like the synergy between that matchup with those two sports, obviously being outside, black women, suntan. I like this relationship. The contract is originally to go from 2022 to 2024. Beach ES will be the official sunscreen of FAMU athletics. It's also the first time BCS, BGS is sponsoring a softball team as the company continues to support the advancement of women and all people of color education. Quote, education about wellness and skin care for people of color has lagged for decades. Our goal is to partner with FAMU is to educate athletes of all skin tones about preventing and avoiding sun damage as they are still susceptible to skin cancer, hyperpigmentation, sunspots, and premature wrinkles. Black Girl Sunscreen sees the importance for outdoor athletes, especially those with deeper skin tones to wear S. EF daily and fight the risk of sun damage by wearing sunscreen, end quote, says Shante London, founder of Black Girl Sunscreen. The size of the global sun care product market 
was valued at, check this out, $10.7 billion in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, with a projection that it will hit $14.7 billion by 2028, according to reports published by Grand View Research. So think about that. You just get 1% of the market and what you can do with a company. So shout out uh, to um, Shantae London, founder of Black Girl Sunscreen and FAMU University in terms of the women getting some love. I love the power that's going into that. Any thoughts on that from you, Mike? No, kudos, uh, kudos, kudos to her. She created the product in uh, 2016 and has the worth of 10.7 billion. Now you talk about growth. You talk well, about that's growth. the whole market. Well, that uh, no, I'm sorry. The, the about the market of the value is uh, the market value. I'm sorry, 10.7 billion. Still, <laughs> so but with that projection that it'll hit 14.7, she's going into a a huge market. So kudos to her. Uh, right. On creating that, taking something that is ours and monetizing it, uh, hats hats off. Yeah, Charles, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to the old marketing uh, axiom: people don't lie about what they like. Uh, so, for her to create this company, Black Girl uh, Sunscreen, and then to partner uh, with uh, uh, an HBCU brand uh, yeah. that's huge, and, and, and to bring light uh, uh, to uh, 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 African Americans being uh, in the sun, I, I'm excited about you know uh, a product uh, developed specifically uh, for uh, uh, individuals like myself. So uh, because we don't, you know, a lot of times we don't think about sunscreen when we're uh, when we're outside. We, you know, it's like uh, my friends just say, you know, that the melanin take care of what it needs to take care of, but that's you know that doesn't uh, go all the way all the time. So you have to uh, be able to take care of your body even when you're in the sun as an African American. Yeah. Biggest, yeah, biggest, you know, biggest like, mix, misconception is that we don't yeah. need sunscreen. Biggest right. misconception. Yeah, true. And I know you playing baseball and lacrosse, you know, you had to get in there and it's mm -hmm. Deuce out there playing baseball. You know, Faith, wife there, she wants to make sure that he's taking care of his skin early and all that kind of stuff. So she puts it on there. Mm -hmm. But then your boy like to travel a little bit, you know, going to the islands over there, you know, Caribbean. I need to make sure I order some in the mail because I need to take my trip regularly. And I like to be out there on the beach when I go. So it should be good in terms of what that looks like. <laughs> Let me stick with you, Charles. And since you had some updates, there, uh, any other news that you want to bring to the table? Yeah, I think this is huge. And this comes out of the world of college basketball. But Alcorn, uh, they signed their head basketball coach, Landon Bussey, uh, to a contract ex extension that will last uh, the SWAT Coach of the Year state in Warman through 2026. This is a statement from him. I'm humbled and honored to have the continued support of our university president as well as our director of athletics. They believe in me as well as my vision and the goals uh, that I help lead this men's basketball program into the future here at Alcorn State University. I'm ever so grateful for that. Of course, Landon Bussy captured the SWAT regular season title uh, last year for the Alcorn State Braves. We're returning uh, the Braves back to that uh, past glory of yours. So, uh, congratulations to Coach Landon Bus. Good call. Good call. Yeah, I like to see that for Landon Bussy. Obviously, I uh, got a chance to meet and work with him and talk with him and listen to him uh, while he was down in Prairie View and obviously going over to all corner Braves and getting done in short order. Uh, I think it's a pretty good move for the Braves. Very to, much so. Uh, lock him in like that. Smart move. It shows that uh, – Mike, know, any news value. that you want to share out there? Go ahead, Charles. No, I was saying that Alcorn is showing that they have value in their head basketball coach. That's that's one of the things you do. You lock him up uh, to uh, an extension. So uh, that goes a long way in terms of knowing where that program is going to be going for the next few years. Well said. Mike, in terms of you, what are some news that you want to bring to the table? Well, well here's one that came across, and this card comes – courtesy of HBCU News flashes uh, via Twitter and Instagram and HBCU Sports. Uh, Coach Fred McNair uh, says he wants to distance himself from the negativity and unfair appraisal of players by a segment of the fan base. Alcorn State Coach Fred McNair is stepping away from his weekly radio show, which I think is huge. Uh, the Braves coach made the announcement uh, on Monday during the most recent episode of the Fred McNair show alongside uh, all corn play by play broadcaster, Charles Edmond. So the, and he quote unquote said that that would be the last one. Uh, so, you know, 
step, stepping up uh, in defense of his team. McNair broke down the Braves 31 uh, to 27 loss to Texas Southern with Edmund and responded to a few listener questions uh, before going to a candid detail about why he will no longer uh, uh, participate in the call-in show. So interesting. I didn't, I was kind of doing some digging to see what some of the comments were. Some of them were heated. Some of them, uh, from if you look at it, the Twitter that he felt were a little bit more biased and not fairly objective questions about the game in and of itself. So huge, huge uh, uh, deal in all corn, all corn territory. Let me make sure I say that right. All corn territory. Yeah, they're gonna come after you. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> if they if they do their coach and players like that, what you think they gonna do? I'm them? telling you, I'm like, <laughs> hey, oh, oh. one thing that I want to get out of here in terms of the business framework of this that makes it different. Um, uh, not in terms of the passion, the fans, as you see with SWAC, HBC programs, whether they're NIA Division II or FCS, is extremely similar to what you see uh, with other programs, even the Power Five. But traditionally in the Power Five, you have coaches that do these shows, but it's contractually obligated that they do the show. It's written into the contract, and oftentimes the big money they get is actually associated with doing whether it's radio, television, uh, these platforms streaming, if you would. And for our level, you don't, you haven't seen these later. This was an addition. This is something they were doing in addition to what they needed to do. Now it makes sense in terms of making sure you gen up uh, your interest. And obviously he's done that, but it's intriguing when you look at how much success the program has had, including what he's done at late and how now that creates a fandom where you have to outperform the high level success you have, which is amazing in terms of your fans continue to move out there. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Obviously, well, for a lot of folks, it's shocked to see that, but that's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I, also, go I, ahead. I, I mean, I think the thing you can kind of take a look at, Doc, is um, fans will be fans, but you know, as a you know, as we all are fans, there is a line. Uh, where you, you can't, you know, just arbitrarily just run over that line. And that being said, coaches have to be careful about not having rabbit ears or where they, you know, are reading the comments from social media because people hide behind a keyboard. There's no no secret behind that. So yep. you have to be, you know, there's a fine line, there's a balance between uh, the fandom and and responding to the fandom in like because I'm sure uh, that's going to break some hearts uh, in terms of all corns fandom that look forward to hearing that radio show. But uh, again, fans got to understand you can't take it there all the time just because you lost exactly. the game. Exactly. Well, well, to to your to your point, the other part is usually though the other shows they're live shows, so mm. people tend to be a little different in terms of like you said if they're live. And the ones that are um, a segment where they take in calls, as we've done with Ralph, you know, you would have a call oftentimes you could kind of mitigate who yeah. you bring on and, you know, know where they're coming from. Um, certainly if you're sending in questions, you can ship through questions that you think will be out. You had a similar incident uh, at North Carolina a t on their Monday calls. They do a stand-up uh, event. And it's usually for the media, but because media has changed so much when you have your quote unquote traditional media and now you have this aggregate media, right? Um, yeah. And then you have fans that are moving into that space because the aggregate media is social. You don't know. In this case, you had literally a fan that was able to get to the mic as if he was media and ask the question. And because he didn't have experience as a media person, he asked the question and then he went almost like it seemed like what happened here where he literally chastised the coach and said, then he was like, he thought the team was making too many penalties and I yeah. and their attitude. And I think that's a legit question. But then he followed up and the coach kind of was like, yeah, we take that. I don't think we should make that many penalties. We'll work on that. Then he almost got to the point where he was going to threaten. He said, no, I want something done about it. You're like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm like, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, and that's, that's, you know, the definition of fan, fanatics. Um, and so you can get that. So the question is, is how do you control that media uh, to the point where you can still have a show, but you might be able to control it a little more, which is I, what you're talking about. Where's the happy medium about making sure your fans it, get access? It, it, but at it, the same it, time, you control. Go, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
the the thing about it is it's quick to assume that it's about the players, but if you dig deeper, there were some comments about his coaching staff. And so you develop relationships with your coaching staff as well. Now, uh, I think, as you said, the coach has to have thick shoulders. Um, he can't get caught up in every single comment. But at the same time, when those some of those comments go awry, even not just about your students or the student athletes, but about your coaches, which he has a relationship with as well. Um, and in this case, I'm kind of looking through the Twitter waves or whatever, and it looks like it was a combination of student athletes and coaches that really pushed him over the edge or seemingly pushed him over the edge. I don't know. So it, it'll be right, interesting. But that's what I'm getting into as you talk about this is 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 what's intriguing about this. And I want to get one more news before we take this break. So I want to be able to point too much. Yep. The other point that you get into, and is also um, fan expectation in terms of what they drive. And again, you got a lot of fans that mimic and copy what they see out there with these Power Five conferences. Um, and not to say they do it, but I, oftentimes it's a different magnitude when you have a coach that is making millions of dollars, assistant coaches as well, about your level of expectation, even though I think there should be some lines of demarcation there. But if you're a coach and you know financially what your institution is putting into the program and you're beating the odds and then you're going to come to me, all my coaches, when you know we're lacking a lot uh, and you know that, yeah, I can see where that hits in a certain way where you'd be like, hold on now. We're actually batting above 500 when you look at the bottom line of what we're getting. Yep. And some of these folks are the same folks that ain't written one check to support the program. Because folks that do actually have access and they can talk to the coach at a different level. One thing yeah. I wanted to say before you get in there is important because we turn around and get into basketball. Uh, SWAC, obviously, we talked about the ESPN uh, basketball games that were announced uh, a, a while ago. Y'all said HBC Go that is announcing basketball, and they're going to do 36 games. Wow. So I thought it was yep. important to put that out there in Woo. terms of HBC Go. Yep. Um, this came out of the uh, SWAC 2023 men's and women's basketball season. Slated games, which will be broadcast in doubleheader format, so men's and women's will get the love or highlighted by several highly anticipated conference matchups throughout the course of the season. And so you can go to your major sites, whether it's SWAC, uh, HBCU Game Day, as well as HBCU Sports, and you can get a list of games. They kick off things on January 7th with Texas Southern at Arkansas Pine Bluff. Doubleheader, that's the reigning uh, tournament champions of the Texas Southern Tigers. And then they close out with the big rivalry game, March 4th, uh, with Texas Southern at Prairie View A&M designated the novices on the men's side. Uh, with these two programs dominating the championship over the last uh, last couple of years, obviously you had that regular season championship by Jackson State where they tied with Prairie View uh, in terms of what they did. And then on the women's side, you've seen Jackson State literally dominated quite a bit on the women's side as of late. So the fascinating say what that looks like you do get a Jackson State at Texas Southern on January 16th to kind of give that some love. And then, obviously, you got uh, Southern and Jackson playing this weekend. So, the second game is uh, January 9th where you have Bethune-Cookman at Southern uh, doubleheader. So, it should be interesting, fat, fascinating games. We'll get to see that new arena in Alabama, January 23rd, Prairie View at Alabama a and get to see their new arena. Uh, go back to Florida with Alabama State at Florida a and January 30th. be interesting to see with the – close proximity of those schools, uh, what that would look like in terms of that matchup starting to increase in intensity. With that, let's get into our first break, come back on the other side, and we'll talk a little bit about marching sport, some changes throughout the marching sport a little bit, so we'll get the poll updates. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this first break. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time.
it's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want a lot of and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, sir. and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill with Inside HBC. Slide with Mike Watson, Charles Bishop, getting ever so ready for the big weekend, man. I uh, hope to see y'all on the other side. You know, remember that. <laughs> Got to throw on Sunday. Don't get too uh, loose and out there, all crazy and thick it that you got to be on here to make sure folks can get their news of what happened on Saturday. Don't do I that. About, I was about to say it could be a whole new crow crew of three on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Brought to you by. <laughs> Dropping out of the polls this week, talking about what is happening in the margin sports scene. Remember, let me give you an update to this and make sure people understand this. You know, you got these polls out here, great polls, uh, people doing it in their own ways. You got these shows that give a lot of good uh, product and appearance for bands. And a lot of times they'll break them down. I love the way they break them down. But oftentimes they, they're voting polls where, you know, you come in there and you text your friends, hey, man, come vote in this poll, email some folks, you know, now you send it on Messenger. Uh, private tweets, you know, go vote here. And try to stack the deck. No, we don't do that. These polls are based on the fact that you got to have balance. You got to have the zero quarter, half time, fifth quarter, right? And you talk about what's going on in the game. Are you supporting your team? Certainly, you get dot points if you're sitting up here playing when your quarterback is behind center and you got your coaches looking at you like you're crazy. Your fans <laughs> looking at you like, what are you doing? <laughs> you got the referee on the mic talking about, hey, can you stop playing when the <laughs> you know, you come on. This is all blast from TV. Don't do that. Don't do that. So you had some teams dropping out. Wasn't necessarily for that, but they haven't had battles in these uh, independent conferences. So they, they hadn't battled in a while. So you got North Carolina a t Blue and Gold Marching Machine started off really hot, good season, uh, dropping out as well as Tennessee State Aristocrat of Bands. And it's unlikely that they'll be able to get back in there. Maybe both teams have a chance as they're looking to make it to the playoffs. And maybe in a matchup in the playoffs, they play each other and the Bands can get down and somebody will come out of there and find a way to get some points. They still are receiving votes. They're, they're in there. North Carolina a t Blue and Gold Machine sitting at 12. Points. Edward Waters, marching band, one note as they continue to play, uh, getting done. They have nine votes, and they've actually had a couple of march matchups in that, and I'll update the rankings there. Tennessee State, the risk crowd of bands with eight uh, in terms of what's getting on going on there. Let's get into the top ten and tell you what's going on in the top ten. You have Albany State marching Ram show band. They continue to be at number 10, 2-1, 2-0 and one, two and oh overall, 13 points. Uh, really solid performance and getting it done in the SIC, not just on the football field, but also in terms of their band supporting and doing a couple of matchups and trips. They're sitting up at three and one, three and oh, all, all. So they're playing some good matchups there. At number nine, Florida AM marching 100. One and one on the season, all and one again. Strong band, powerful band, but they're just not having any matchups in terms of uh, matching up against HBCU band. So it'll be interesting to see if that will carry on the rest of the season. But Thorne Cookman, Marshall Wildcats, same way, undefeated in their matchups, but they hadn't had any since the beginning of the football season. We're well past midterm grade, so that's not a good thing when you haven't taken the test in the last couple of weeks. And I've been giving out quizzes, uh, midterm exams, so you didn't miss a couple of assignments. That's not going to be good 
of what you're doing in the ranking. So you follow spot. At number seven, uh, you have none other than Alcorn State, the Sounds of Dynamite Band, two and three. They took an L last week, uh, 23 points, six in terms of what they're going. Strong matchup, a uh, little bit of upset as Texas Southern traveled over there, represented, and we'll see what that means as Texas Southern seems to have gotten on the board with the win. In fact, it jumps them up to number six. Wow. They had some of the toughest battles. Wow, man. Bro, not only they did the duo, they got the homecoming win. Homecoming upset, the band took off. So it was a tough weekend in Louisville, Mississippi. It might be some of the reasons why McNair is that upset. You talk about us. Look what happened to the band. Nah. Yeah. All that about the band. The band <laughs> took an L2. Yeah. Oh. Well, Texas Southern more on um, what the Ocean of Soul did, two and three, two and two, representing, and they got some good matches coming up. My understanding, Grambling is coming down here. Is the Sonic Boom going to be able to make it to Houston for a Jackson State game? Oh, uh, we'll see. I think the Sonic Boom is uh, gearing up to come over to Houston. Ooh, boys. So wow. Do a big Ooh. match of it. That happens. What are you talking about being able to close out the season strong in terms of opportunity? We'll keep it up and keep you updated and see what that looks in. But Texas Southern jumps into the poll first time this year and jumps all the way to number six. Big, big up the ocean of soul. Let's get in the top five. Prairie View and Marching Band, they fall a spot again, three and one, two and one for uh, previously ranking. They have not performed in a while. They're getting that position. You'll fall out if you don't get these matchups. You better get on the road. You see Ocean of Soul, Texas Southern, they take a trip. They get on the road and create the matchup they want to see. And number four, North Carolina Central Sound Machine Marching Band, 3-0. and uh, They had that Morgan State Thursday night game, got it done, and so they remain and move up a spot uh, in terms of what they've been able to get done. We'll see what that means the last, next the rest of the year. As been said by Joshua Sims, as he does his HBC nightly tonight, we might sneak him in there for the last segment and tell you a little bit about that. But – He's told us they don't do a lot of band traveling in the MEAC, so it can be tough for them to find a way to stay in the top five. We'll see what they can do. Bring us number three, Jackson State Sonic Boom of the South, 4-1, 3-1, one, 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 one first place vote, 78. They remain at number three. Remember, they were first place for the rest of the year. I mean, for the first part of the year, got upset a little bit, took the first loss, but they're still in striking in distance, and they have a big matchup, a boom box classic, as they call it in a lot of places. That is coming up this weekend. And number two, Alabama State Mighty Marching Hornets, 3 and 0, two first place <laughs> votes, probably the shock of most folks, 82 points. Can they maintain it? They do have a Magic City match, so they at least will be able to have an opportunity to be in there. And then you got Southern, Human Jukebox, 4 and 0, five first place votes, 85 points. Uh, you got a one versus three matchup. This matchup essentially, not a part of last season, decided. Who ended up winning uh, the poll in ways? There were not a lot of changes oh, wow. after this took place. So this was probably going to be for a national championship, uh, at least on the band side of the things. We'll see what it means in terms of sweat championship. We'll talk about that in the fourth segment of the show. But got folks itching their heads, getting into it. I want to know what you think. Let me go with you, Mike. What are your <laughs> thoughts on the market sport in week number seven? Come on in here. Well, Charles, what you gonna <laughs> say? <laughs> Southern, Southern's coming to town. The jukebox is coming to town. Them in all they four quarters when they when they perform, they break out into those four quarters. What you what you gonna do? What's gonna happen? Hey, um, I'm go for it. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, you know who y'all need? You know that person that did the prayer. At 2021 homecoming, yeah, hey, y'all need to bring him back to do do the opening prayer for the band <laughs> <laughs> to set this whole stage for yeah. the band. For the band, but <laughs> but Doc, getting back to your poll, I didn't mean to get off key there. Uh, no, I no, nothing wrong with it. Um, uh, I thought Prairie View, to be honest, was gonna fall a little bit further. We talked about it uh, on our show and uh, how they haven't been playing really up to snuff. So uh, nothing wrong with your poll. I was wondering why the Eagles, uh, the uh, North Carolina Central Eagles, didn't fly travel to uh, South Carolina State that game. What? Um, yeah, oh, they, or, or maybe I maybe I had that wrong. But they correct me if I'm wrong. They didn't travel. Is that correct? 
Come on, Josh. Talk to them, man. It's just South Carolina. They got to make that trip. That's one state. I'm serious. That's yeah, one that's state over. That's embarrassing. I started dropping down for that. Uh, another spot. How you going? What? <laughs> I was like, what in the what? That that would be a classic. Even Lonnie Shaw out here talking to him. He like, man, have you seen the band? Y'all seen them. They small, but they good. They good. They got to perform, though. Some of these folks, I don't understand how y'all even have a modern band. Y'all don't put no money in your band to have them travel. I know y'all have good bands, but they got to travel. You can't be in the pole if you're not having matchups. Yeah. 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 You play historic white college marching band, that don't count. You're supposed to be them. I yeah. see you. They doing core style and you doing all this. I'm mastering on the HBC marching sport. So yeah, that's not even a fair fight. I don't even want to talk about yeah. that. So yeah. Charles, what are your thoughts? I, I yeah, have I, one I have one more point before you, Charles. Should yeah. should should not fam you always be in the top five? They got a million people in their band and they do all kinds of tricks. They may be in the top five, Mike, if you don't perform. You got two oh. How you mean top five? <laughs> Got a million oh. people in the band and don't nobody see you. Oh. That was just like a tree falling in the forest. You gotta, you gotta take a show on the road. I agree. I go. I go with that. I go with that. I go no, with that. No, no, that you'll go in the popular vote. You can go in the popular vote. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doc, go I'll ahead, you, what, you know, I talked to uh, Jackson State Sports Information Director Wayne Lewis, and uh, they have as many uh, band media requests as they do. Uh, other media requests. I mean, this is the penultimate when you're talking about Sonic Boom and the Human Jukebox, uh, what has been called the Boombox Classic. Uh, but when I tell you about the, the intensity and all band and the bands checking all boxes, this is something that I want you to keep in mind for this weekend. The way each band engages their band the grand, base. Right. That is exactly. going to be a huge thing because momentum in this sort of game uh, rest sometimes with you know whether the band can crank up the crowd and get you and, excited on a third down, get you excited on a yeah. fourth down, things of that nature. Yes. Uh, knowing when to play, uh, that's going to be a huge yeah. thing this weekend. But I mean, when you talk about entrances into the stadium, when you see both fan bases engaged like that, they get that standing ovation when the bands come in. Uh, then you go into the zero quarter, and then you know it's almost as though halftime is kind of ancillary. I mean, yeah. because there's this, there's so much that happens prior to halftime. Of course, looking forward to the halftime show. And then they're going to literally have to cut the lights out on both of these mans in terms yeah. of the quarter because they will exhaust their book. Right. I mean, I, I literally sat there and watched them not leave the stadium when the PA announcer was asking everybody to vacate the stadium. There was a tornado in the area. Both bands refused to leave. And then eventually, you know, what happened was the woodwinds left. But the brass still stayed out there. So right. they played through the rain. It's that intense. Uh, it is the most intense band robbery that I've ever seen. So I'm going to enjoy uh, Southern Human Jukebox and Sonic Boom on the South. Talk to Dr. Roger Little, uh, band director for Sonic Boom on the South. He's like, yeah, tonight's a late night. We're we yeah. going to be out there. So, C <laughs> so looking forward to it. <laughs> CB, CB, something you said we talked about is that should be a criteria. The ability of a band to engage and play to their crowd. Oh yeah, Southern Southern came and they engaged their crowd before the game, during the game, and it's not like they playing anything new. They playing yeah. what people want to hear, and all of a sudden you hit them, you see them umbrellas break break out, and you da 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 da, -da that old Louisiana da 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 da. -da. I, that it's the same stuff. People get so hyped, and they bought their fans into it. You know, yeah. I, I, it's it's like a, a step show. We used to always say, you know, nobody cares about the trophy, but did you house the crowd? Right. So, you know, the halftime, yeah, okay, great. But did you house the crowd? Did That's you the get the thing. crowd? Did you get the crowd? So it's all about getting the crowd. This weekend. See see what I'm talking about? I even got these folks on. I don't have to say much anymore. <laughs> they broke down. I told Jerome G. Sutton, put your band and on, put them on the road. Go have a concert. Somebody asked about Jack State, Alabama State. Yeah, it was the honeybee. It was the honeybee. The honeybee. It was the more. You know who closed it out and got the win for them at home. Yeah, they took the L on the football team, but they actually won the band battle. It was a close one. It was a close one. Uh, and Doc, but they got it done. We're going to have a little pre-battle of the bands right outside the doors. Uh, Churchill, of course, sits on uh, the stadium nice. grounds of the baseball stadium. So 
the boom and the juke are gonna get it on over here tomorrow. So looking forward to it. Man, I like nice. that. Shout out to Stephen Gaither. He just won't want it to be said. I don't think they really beat Winston Salem State University band wise. He just saying so it's on the record. He is protesting what he had there. So you know, I don't know if Steve gave to know about band. So I'll tell you what it is, but I want to register and let him know we understand it. With that, we're gonna go to the break. We'll bring you week number nine next week. We got some key matchups. We'll get them out here. We'll see what goes and how things change this week as we continue to march through the season. Although this is a big one. We got number one versus number three in the poll rankings this week. Let's see who gets it done. This is Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab. We'll be right back after this break as we get into the marching sport. We might have to sneak out there and make sure Charles takes some footage of this <laughs> so we can play it throughout the show in terms of marching sports so you can get a glimpse of the halftime of what we talking about. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. We are making the virtual HBCU experience available wherever you live through Stillman Online. We offer online degrees in business, criminal justice, psychology, and religion. Stillman also offers technology badges in cybersecurity and data analytics. You can participate in all student activities, fraternities and sororities, internships, graduation ceremonies, and much more. Apply for admission today at stillman.edu. Stillman College, where we prepare you for a different world. T. Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're gonna tell you if your team, if they want a lot of and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention because he's gonna teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watson, Charles Bishop. Let's get into it. CIAA game of the week. That's the mid major division CIAA game of the week. It's in Richmond, Virginia. Movie Field, uh, CIAA, Saturday, October the 29th, 12 o'clock Central Time. HBCUGo.tv will carry it. This is an intriguing matchup because when you look at the overall records, you're like, man, why is this a game when we 8 0 versus 5 and 3? Yes, Sharon Hawks come in at 5 and 3, but they're 5 and 1 in the division. Yeah. That's the North yeah. Division versus the number one ranked Virginia Union Panthers that are 8 0. But just six and zero in the division. So what does that mean? If the Hawks can get it done, obviously it'll be a huge win. Uh, but if they finish out the season, you have both teams sitting with one loss, right? At seven and one. Guess who represents the Northern Division wow. for the championship? See how they championship. The head-to-head -head tiebreaker would go to Shawan Hawks. So they would do. So this is a bigger matchup. And people realize because of the implication of the division that take place. So I'm going to go to you, Mike. What are your thoughts in terms of matchup? Do you think the Hawks have a chance? No, I'm still going to go with Virginia Union. They do have a common <laughs> opponent. Sorry. Uh, I'm, nope. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I really wish I really I wish I could put a whole lot into it. You, I, I could dazzle you with data points. 
I could I could go through this scenario. They have one common opponent, I think Fayetteville State, and I believe Shawan lost. And I believe Virginia Union won. So you can also use that as a it's a data point. But I just think uh, matchup-wise, Virginia Union matches up better, and I look for this to be a Virginia Union win. Mm. Charles, what are your thoughts? It's actually an intriguing matchup, Doc. I mean, when you take a look at Shawan in terms of their offensive prowess, uh, and you talk about uh, Rashad McKeith, the quarterback, and, and Lawrence King, they they have a nice little hookup going. But at the end of the day, I think it's just too much Jada Byers. I mean – <laughs> the dude had 40 carries or something this past week. I mean, they just pound you to death and grind you down by about a third quarter, midway third quarter somewhere. So I, I think Virginia Union will take this. I don't think they'll fall off with it. Mm. Oh, good one. Good one. Uh, shout out in terms of that analysis. Let's, let's go to the SIC. Fred Whitty is sneaking in here and he says, He's still on the band stuff, man. He folks take this stuff bad. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 no. Last week, the Hog Band was hey. a no show. Rams young and old, no bands. We see red. We show even when the home team don't show up. Yeah, that's true. But this is a band. I told you again, y'all get all excited because your band do a little hey. something by themselves. March up. I agree with you. It's, it's nice. Don't mean hey, nothing. Uh-huh. That's something like this market sport. Now, if y'all want to call it something else, y'all want to take out the sport, that's fine. But as far as I know, in market sport, there's competition. It means yeah. the winner, the yeah. loser. You playing by yourself, I don't know how that works. That's not a good thing. We, we don't do <laughs> Man, let me get back in before I go off again. Frankfurt, Kentucky, Alumni Stadium, SIEC West, Saturday, October the 29th. As you know, another 12 o'clock game. This one's on ESPN Plus. Top 10 matchup. Number seven, Tuskegee Golden Tigers, six and two, five and zero oh in the division. At number ten, Kentucky State Thoroughbreds, four and four, but they're three and one in the division. This is for the conference. This could be huge. Again, the winner of this has a major chance of representing uh, the team in terms of the CIAA championship game for the West. We'll see what that looks like. Let me go with you, Charles. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup, Kentucky State Thoroughbreds? The Ski Golden Tigers, they undefeated in the conference play, have won six straight. You know, as A.D. Drew brought out, uh, Tuskegee is probably one of the hottest teams uh, playing football right now. And they have, I think, everything just started in that upward trajectory after that road win in West Alabama. But uh, this is a complete, uh, a solid football team. I think they will go up to uh, Frankfurt and get this win. Uh, like I said, they're, they're, they're winning in all types of ways. We take a look at them this past week. They came back from 10 down in the last five minutes of the ball game against Lane and snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. So I'm looking for the Golden Tigers to get this W up there in Frankfurt. And they won through defense. They won through passing. They won through a solid ground game. I mean, they're, they're one in all, t- all directions in terms of trying to uh, get these Ws. But I, I, I think Tuskegee gets, gets this one on the road. Mike Washington, what are your thoughts? CIAA matchup. Yeah, I, what are I, 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 I'm sorry. This is going to be, yeah, I think Tuskegee uh, pulls this one out. Uh, they are playing lights out really well this week, this year. So you look at all the statistics, you know, uh, points scored, running, uh, they they appear to be very balanced. So I, I see no reason why Tuskegee shouldn't pull this out. Good stuff. Let's get into our break. This is Dr. Bill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. But before we do that, uh, uh, let me give some shout outs, some folks on here that are showing us some love, getting in the dialogue, getting it done uh, before we take this break and bring you back on the other side. I shouted out some of them, Jerome Jeep Sutton, Ricky Burden, Stephen Gates, the great dialogue going on, Arthur Grant Sr., Edward Moore, keep it up, Roderick Byron Holmes. That's Dr. Holmes. Uh, coming in here showing us Lonnie Shaw, Kevin Harris, uh, Mary Allen is always in the house, Ben Coleman. Appreciate all the love, Noah. Price is always showing love. J Mac is in here having a little fun. Come on, mm. the shade, doc. You like that? Yeah, Mr. Photographer. Marquez Hardness. And we'll shout out some more, but let's get into our next break. This Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Lab. Keep up with us. We'll have a surprise on the other side. Come on back with us as we get into the major division and get in some great talk stickers. We'll be right back after this break. 
Q-Time is our classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q-Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q-Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q-Time, an Urban Passport member. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvée. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Full, but we hungry. Mango's Caribbean uh-huh. Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a good thing going. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Authentic Caribbean cuisine. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Gavils inside HBC Sports <clears throat> Labs. We have Charles Bishop, Michael Washington, the professors. That's Professor Bishop, Professor Washington. And we got the Sunday crew here, the gurus, one out of the MEAG, one out of the SWAG, giving you all your HBCU knowledge. We got Joshua Sims Sr. and B.J. Jones. I think there's a little big games this weekend, so we wanted to make sure you got a big last segment here. But let's start out in the MEAG. This is the MEAG Division Game of the Week. We're going to give everybody a chance to talk about a little This is Dover, Delaware, Alumni Stadium, homecoming for Delaware State. We got a lot of that going around right now. Saturday, October the 29th, as you know, ESPN matchup, 1 o'clock. Number four, North Carolina Central Eagles, 5-2, and 1-1. One and one, had a tough loss last week. At number nine, State Hornets, 4-3, and 1-1. One and one, Also had a tough loss. The reason I put that together, it, it's going to be tough, one loss, but essentially this game puts you outside of it. You can't recover, I would think, in terms of this matchup. So let me just go to you. Mike, any thoughts in terms of this matchup? No, I think I think Central bounces back. I mean, you think I I can't explain this last loss. I didn't have a chance to take out the game, but you know, you're talking about uh, if you're talking about North Carolina Central, you know, you look at a team that's scoring what 40 points a game. Uh, they're allowing what 20 points a game. Um, balance. Uh, they they've had a few issues with penalties and efficiency, but I, I look for them to bounce back with a solid win against. Uh, Delaware State. I uh, but watch out. That could be a watch out. Don't overestimate. So <laughs> Charles is shaking his head. What are your thoughts, man? I lost my watch out for Delaware State after the loss to Howard. I, I, I <laughs> you know, 
you gonna keep it that simple? I, yeah, I, I mean, I had my that was my watch out alert. I was getting ready for this game, and then the Hornets spit the bit against Howard. Howard. I, 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 I wasn't ready for that. You know, I, I was I I wanted this game to be that matchup. And I said two yeah. weeks ago, you know, you, you almost you're waiting for that, that shooter drop with Delaware State. It hadn't until that game. So uh I haven't lost faith in North Carolina Central in terms of the type of team they are. They ran into a, a very good South Carolina State team uh that still has a lot of talent. Uh, uh when you take a look at throwing the ball to Shaq Davis. I mean, just yeah. and the dude the dude did what he did. So, you know, all you can do is just shrug your shoulders like, you know, that that's a run around pick. So I I think North Carolina Central goes up to Delaware and they get this man and they're still right in the thick of things with me. I, I just wonder what Delaware State, because I said that with a uh, this is the same Delaware State that beat Norfolk State two weeks ago, then turn around and drop a L against Howard. I don't know what the hell. So I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so hey, I'm like, it might be all right. Right. We'll see it. BJ Jones, what are your thoughts? Oh, man, you're social, man. You got to bounce back. If you have any uh, ideas of coming to Atlanta, not as a spectator, uh, but to play in a ball game, you can't drop this one. Um, you got to come out. You got to play better, improve. Uh, those turnovers were killer and costly um, a week ago. And I, I'm looking forward uh, to seeing the Eagles uh, bounce back uh, compared to what they looked like uh, a week ago. Yeah, I think they have a lot of focus in this game. But we got our MIAC expert in here along with HBCU. He's played it. He's done it in terms of coaching. Bring it, bring it home and tell us what about this matchup? What do we, we need to look at and think about? Yeah, Doc, man, this is, um, you know, if, if you're North Carolina Central, you, you don't want this game that to, you know, you don't want to let the South Carolina State game beat you twice. Um, you know, good teams find a way to let, you know, bad losses, you know, kind of roll off and you're able to kind of play the next week. Bad teams or average teams find a way to let games that, you know, you feel like just slipped away from you, find a way to beat you to vet the next week. And so, you know, this week is going to be very, very incumbent. But I, I'm putting the I'm putting the nuts and bolts on the back of Davius Richard again this week. You know, it, are you who we say you are? You know, we'll get a chance to see if you really are who we say you are uh, or is it time for us to go in and start getting ready for basketball season? And from a Delaware State perspective, um, you know, you kind of want to see if that defense, you know, can be able to stand tall the way that we've talked about them all season. We've talked about Delaware State's defense being the catalyst to their to their entire program. Okay, well, let's see if your defense really is like that. Well, and I'm in with this, Doc. How dare mm -hmm. you? The audacity, the pure gall for you to put us on your schedule for your homecoming. <laughs> and you want us to come from 1801 Fed. <laughs> Drive up to Dover, Dover Delaware and uh -oh. play. We got to look uh -oh. at the homecoming. We got to look at all the pomp and circus. We got to look at the homecoming king and queen get crowned. And the band going to be out there playing for an extra 10, 15 minutes. We got to sit inside the – how dare you? So <laughs> look, for us, look for us to make a <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I hear you. I hear you. Uh, you put the stamp on it. Great way to close it out there. Uh, in terms of that matchup, that's why we bring him in because he's going to bring it like that every time. Hey, Let's get hey, into this next matchup. Hey, Doc, Doc, I, I think we got a new saying. Uh, for real. I, I think Josh got a new saying. Two weeks ago, we get everybody talking about, I am swag. I am swag. Now we got a new one. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? The unmitigated gall. The unmitigated gall. You go learn. Hey. <laughs> and they're going to be mad. Yeah, I don't know about that. Let's get in this next matchup. You don't get these all the time. Obviously, you get big time rivalry games, but you don't get the games to set up to match what the rivalry brings. You know, in terms of the poll I got here, this is number three. Uh, and Southern has steadily climbed and earned that number three ranking, while Jackson State uh, has been number one in terms of eight consecutive weeks. So they've been there in terms of the measuring step and very consistent. So you got number three, Southern Jaguars, five and two, three and one. At number one, Jackson State Tigers, 7 0, 4 and 0. Obviously, a lot more work to do for Jackson State in terms of closing out on this, but this sets them up, and they're ranked number five nationally 
Uh, they continue to get the accolades they deserve in terms of what's out there. Their eyes are set not just on a SWAC championship game, but returning to the Celebration Bowl and seeing if they can roll, raise not only that trophy, but therefore a black college national championship. But then you got the team on the other side, Southern, in terms of the coach that came over Prairie View that played for a championship last year, resurrecting the Southern Jaguars that says not so fast, we won't. But you put on the paperwork, think about this. I know there are a lot of teams out there that are in the mix, and depending on how this turns out, uh, they're going to be in there. Alabama A&M has one loss, so they still have a big game to play. And if they can play it out, they can find a way to be in a championship game. You got Prairie View looking on the other side. They got a homecoming that they got to take care of. Alcorn is right there. Yeah, they lost another loss by Southern. They're right back in the mix to some degree. And then you got Texas Southern, one of the only teams that have beaten Southern and Alcorn in the same year since, what, 2007 or something like that. It's 2011. It's been a while in terms of what that looks for both teams. And they're in there saying not so fast either. But if Southern can get this done, and both teams hold out at 7-1. and one. Again, as I told you with Shawan and Virginia Union, you have one of those things. Yes, both teams will be in the championship game, but instead of being in Baton Rouge Memorial Stadium where this game is, it'll be on the bluff in Baton Rouge. Wow. So there's a lot of implications in terms of how I set this up and I did this on purpose. I'm going to go to you, Joshua, first, go to Mike, then I'm going to save the two guys that happen to know these two institutions uh, like their backhand for various reasons, I'll save them two for last. But let me go to you, Josh, first. Let me know what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup. Yeah, Doc, man. Uh, um, you know, <laughs> I mean, you talk about the most the, the most anticipated Saturday of Black college football this season, and we keep saying it every single week, Doc. We keep saying yep. every single week that every single week is the most anticipated weekend of Black college football. But here we are now at the peak of the mountaintop. You know, prior to SWAC Championship Weekend and, you know, what's going to look like a, a MEAC kind of showdown at, at the end of the season. Dog, this is number three Southern versus number one Jackson State for what could end up making the entire world blow up, that is HBCU football, <laughs> or what could end up setting up another showdown later on in the season anyway. I mean, mm. dog, this mm. is perennial, high-power, premier black college football. And as a fan, I want to say as a fan, I am going to be so excited to be glued to the television, watching this game this weekend, seeing how this game turns out. Doc, I don't have any data points. I don't, I'm just a fan of this game, dog. And I can't wait to see how it goes down. That's all I got to say, baby. Man, I respect that. I like how you dropped it. Mike, what are your thoughts on this? I, I could just say it simply. There's a lot on the line on this one. I'm serious. There's a lot on the line. Yeah, family, that's true. Some families going to stop eating and going to talk to the other side because you got families with, we you know, ties to both schools. You got they, you got uh, you got the band at stake here. You got which team going to tailgate, two teams that are – two organizations, two institutions that are strong in tailgating. So we're going to see who's going to win on all fronts of this war. Tailgating, band, drumline, halftime, fifth quarter, uh, and then let's not even get into the game. We're going to see who's, whose team can insert their will the best. Jackson State, offense, 495 yards a game. Leading the swack, right? Well, guess who's number two in defense? Southern, allowing teams only 270 uh, yards a game. Oh, it keeps – the data points keep rolling down. So we're going to see – but this kind of game, you got to throw data points out. Southern, offense, rushing, 228 yards a game. Texas <clears throat> State, only allowing people 72 yards a game. Whose will is going to win when you get in between the trenches? So – and who's going to play that efficient ball game? Um, so we'll see. Uh, but you got to throw statistics out. This is a rivalry. This will be a slug match. But uh, at the end of the day, it, I'm just—I'll be happy. Hell, I wanted to leave Prairie View's homecoming and take a, a, a 
a red <laughs> a red out of Jackson. <laughs> Jackson. I mean, yeah, Jackson. you better be glad I ain't got no money. Exactly. The only reason is because we we'll do all the evening stuff with the prairie folk. We're yeah. gonna see this game live. Yeah, live. Now, uh, Come the on only back. reason is because I got money on this, but Jackson, they got all the limelight. They got Good Morning America showing up, kicking it with Michael Strahan. So <laughs> you know Southern's been reading the press clippings. So you you're gonna see a, a heck of a matchup. <laughs> then you chop it in, you got college. This game day, BJ Jones. Yeah, take us in some of the matchups as you talk about uh, what do you think in terms of what needs to take place for Southern to find a way to get this done. The biggest thing is that defensive line has to eat. Um, that defensive line goes eight, nine deep. A lot of talented guys uh, on the def- defensive front. This will be the first time in a long time that all eight, nine of them will be ready to go. Um, so we're very excited about that and and and, and seeing. You know what that can mean. Um, you know to see Trey Lang and, and Jordan Lewis and Great House and Dumas uh, and and all those guys up front. Um, so that 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 defensive line has to eat. They have to make it difficult um, for Jackson State. Um, and also, man, our defensive backs, man, we, we went big um, as far as defensive backs. Those guys are six one, six two. Um, you know they're they're big guys back there. And that's for a reason. You got to be able to match up with those receivers from Jackson State. And they're physical guys. Um, there's not a lot of, you know, free uh, running off the line of scrimmage. They go jam you. They go put their hands on you. Um, and, and, and that's those those are battles that they're going to have to win, which can be aided <laughs> by that defensive line. And then on the other side, um, we went and got big receivers. Uh, receivers that will go up and get the ball and go get up and get uh, – we get the ball at the highest point, and they win one-on-one battles, and they're going to have to win one-on-one battles because that's the style of the defense that Jackson State plays. They're going to cause hell up front. So on the outsides, when when you have an opportunity, you got to win. Man, look at that! That was yeah. perfect. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Sniper, yeah. Charles, tell me what Jackson State has to do to get it done. I honestly think Jackson State uh, doesn't uh, – the big thing for me is not shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, they have uh, – unfortunately, they put the ball on the ground a few times a season. We've done some interceptions, but uh, it's been inconsequential. And in a rivalry game, uh, you have to make sure you take care of those one, two, threes and, and make sure you take care of the ball. I think uh, uh, one of the stories in this game could be the weather. Uh, we're expecting rain in Jackson uh, between Friday and Saturday. Uh, so uh, I think that's going to play a part into this game. Uh, but the thing that I do want to say about this this team, as a, as a fan, for me, um, I, I'm Jackson State and Southern. There are a lot of ghosts for me. You know, some of the best teams that I've seen at Jackson State, uh, 1996, uh, 1989, uh, uh, 2000, uh, 1999, Swag Championship game. Some of the best teams yeah. that I've watched uh, with Jackson State were beaten by Southern. So for me, as a fan, uh, I have demons. I have Southern demons, if you will. The great thing about the personality of this team is they don't know much about the rivalry. There are no ghosts to exercise. There are no demons for them to deal with. They honestly deal with teams like, okay, next team up. Uh, you saw that, you know, all the scuttlebutt was about Campbell. Wait see Campbell. Wait see. And for the personality of the team, it was very much like, okay, a Campbell. You know, and it's not an arrogance, but it's it, it's it's extreme confidence uh, when they head out on the field that they do not expect to lose. They expect to make plays. So, um, and I think that's a, something that you know I keep in mind with regards to Jackson State as they move through the season. That a lot of these guys are not steeped in that sweat tradition of knowing the rivalry, knowing uh, the demons, knowing the ghost of, of of playing teams in the past that all the fans do. So they really do take it as next team up. And their business-like approach this past week with regards to Southern, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, and I just yet to see a team uh, methodically work the ball up and down the field on Jackson State. Uh, they've given up chunk plays. But uh, for the most part, uh, even if you go back to just the, the latest example with Campbell, uh, Campbell moved the ball in the first quarter 
But once the adjustments were made, they were shut down the rest of the game. The score was not indicative of how dominant Jackson State actually was in that game, especially from a defensive perspective. So until I see any data point where a team is moving the ball up and down the field and Jackson State doesn't have any answers, you know, that, that, that for me gives me a lot of confidence as a fan of Jackson State. Good stuff, good stuff. So it looks like the adjustments need to be made in terms of B.J. Jones making his points in regards to you got to win some of these one-on-one battles. So it's going to be fascinating to see with that. Joshua, I know you're about to do the HBC night. Tell everybody where they need to go to jump off of here. And if they want and love some of this talk and they want to get some more and hear some more, tell them where to go. Absolutely. Uh, you guys can catch us live on, on, HB, uh, on Twitter tonight um, at HBCU Nightly. Uh, please jump on. I will be going Twitter live tonight. Um, so I'll be live so people can be able to see my face as we're going through some of these things. And we'll kind of go into some of these games, talk about some of these games, especially on the major division, and really just give a chance for everybody to kind of give their opinion, man, and, and give some insight. You know, there's a caveat and a variation of different uh, opinions as it pertains to HBCU football. And we welcome them all, as long as it's not nothing too, too crazy. Uh, but, but for the most part, man, we welcome all opinions, man. And um, nothing's too crazy for so far, man. Uh, and uh, salute to my brother, BJ, man. Uh, he does his show on Tuesdays, man. They do a phenomenal job, and it kind of sets us up to be be able to have a great show. Normally, our show is on Wednesdays, uh, but we moved it from yesterday to tonight uh, just so we can be able to have an extended time show. So everybody, you know, feel more than welcome. Come over. Um, your family over there, just like your family here. And, uh, you know, once you come in, come jump in, man, and give your opinion, man. Have some conversation, and I'll see you guys then. And we're working on a project, Joshua Sim Senior, BJ Charles. We're going to tell everybody. We'll tease it out a little bit. But they're working on something special. Keep looking, and we're going to see if we can put something together as we kind of push this out in the ether. Thank you for listening inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, the dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the college HBC Sports with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock, Sunday at 9 o'clock. Also, Mike Washington with 1876 Sports and Cultures, he gets ready. He'll be on the yard in terms of homecoming, and he'll be doing a special live show, give you some updates and tailgates, so check that out at 11 o'clock. They'll be live on that. Obviously, we have the pregame. Pregame is going to be doing stuff. Instead of at their normal pregame, they'll actually do it on Friday. So make sure you check out Charles and Bishop. They'll be live on Friday to give you some update news there. Obviously, you have your traditional shows that we do at ONG Strikes On. I think they're going to do a special edition, so check out their feeds to see what they're going to do for the homecoming down there in Tallahassee, as they like to say, highest of seven hills. Obviously, you have G-Ho. We're going to give some love to a and I know, Joshua, you can't say the name. I can't. <laughs> A&T, North Carolina Aggies down there in terms of their homecoming, greatest homecoming on earth. Uh, and then we're going to make Fans sure home. our Alabama folks out there. E.J. Jones has a lot of family that knows about that. I'll be remiss if I didn't make sure I showed some love for the Magic City class. Mm. Alabama a and yes. Alabama State, as they get it done in another yes, uh, anniversary tilt with that big rivalry. So a lot of good HBCU football. So turn over to HBCU nightly so you can get it on and get more of it. They'll be on all night. I'll jump on there as well. Remember to make sure you check out B.J. Jones' his top five Tuesday. As he gets it out next Tuesday, it'll be interesting to see what that looks like after this big weekend. So stick with us as we continue to give you all the great HBCU. Obviously, Saturday with Carlos Brown in terms of what he gets done as well. And then you wrap it up on Sunday with Brian and AD with Sports Wrap. That'll do it for us. We look forward to next week uh, as we get into it starting on Sunday at 9 o'clock for us. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cabill, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Twitter. Inside the HBC Sports Lab on Facebook and YouTube. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Mike? Lecture. Both B.J. Jones and Josh? Dismissed. Dismissed. Dismissed.